Hey everyone, this is Josh from Before. I'm here with McFarland Toys DC Multiverse Green Lantern Kyle Rayner from the Blackest Night storyline. This is going to be interesting. I'm looking at him in the box right now. Definitely looks a lot better than promo photos, but some choices were made. I've got mixed opinions right now. We'll see out of the box what we're looking at exactly. Now we'll take a quick lap around. Atrocitus build a fig wave, obviously. We are. This is figure number three that we're looking at from the Atrocitus build a fig wave. So I got the entire Blackest Night wave from McFarland Toys online store. And I gotta say, they are really coming through lately. If they keep up this trend of being the first place that is shipping the figures in stock and they got those great bundle deals, you throw in this promo code that works with pretty much any order as far as I know, an extra 10% off, that helps make up for the shipping. I'd love to see them continue this trend. I think it's working out really well. Now let's get Kyle out of the box. Okay, now let's get him out of the box here and he feels very nice in hand. Now, of course, before I get started, you know, I got to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everyone that has been sharing and supporting my comic book Kickstarter. You've helped make this campaign a tremendous success. It's still going strong. Not only have you helped turn this channel into a fantastic community, now together we're adding published comic creator into the mix. Very exciting stuff. I'll have tons of updates and stuff about that in the future. Of course, if you haven't checked it out, please do and, and consider supporting. Even, you know, if you just want to drop a dollar in the bucket, every little bit helps. And if you want to know more about it, of course, there's the campaign link and there's plenty of other videos on this channel with behind the scenes looks and a lot more. So please check it out, folks. All right, now let's really dive into this Kyle Rayner figure. Like I said, it feels really nice in hand. Now, he definitely has a very traditional silhouette here. So at first glance, it doesn't seem to be the most memorable thing in the world. But, you know, after, you know, taking a moment really looking at him, it feels pretty special, I gotta admit. Now, when it just comes to this general design, I do have to say that the John Stewart here, and this was also used as Hal Jordan, this body buck, this sculpt, it does to me feel more like what I would think of a Green Lantern figure looking like. It appeals more to my taste. I do like this little extra business they've added that's kind of futuristic, kind of alien, kind of space-y. It really works for me. And for this here, they've done away with a lot of those sculpted embellishments. It's a much more simplified sculpt, but it has this texture running throughout. And it goes a long way to just keep this very fairly plain silhouette from being forgettable. It's it's a little bit of extra something. And when you take into account some of the stuff they've been doing with like Godspeed, for example, who you would maybe just expect this figure to just have like a, a spandexy looking costume, and yet they put this very subtle, really classy, really modern looking texture on both the regular spandex areas and then another one here, this quilted thing. And even stuff like this Zod figure and the fabric, the, the kind of alien looking fabric texture on his cape. It feels like they're really taking some chances with trying to just go above and beyond just a regular spandex costume, give you something a little bit more memorable, a little more unique. It's really working for me. I think it's a really classy move. And I think it's saving this figure quite a bit because I, there's so many things I do not care for about it. I don't like how the green's just painted and there's no separation there. Even just a little bit of trim, a little piece of piping, separating where the green and the black go. That, that's, I don't love that. It makes it feel a little plain, but wow, I mean, just, he looks sharp and stuff that I really want to complain about, like the neon lime green in hand. I don't know, this guy feels really cool. I mean, you, I, I think it looks great on camera too. I, mean, I feel like if you're looking at this guy, he's, this has got to look better to you than the promo photos looked, right? Definitely getting a uh, color mismatch there where the neck and the head meet. And it does feel like his mask is sitting a little low on his face, but I know I'm listening to a bunch of things that I don't like, but the figure is still like kind of rocking for me. I love how much they've been pushing these bicep cuts here. 
They're just cutting out more and more. That are allowing for a really big expressive range in the arms. It's, it's really good. This is really good stuff. So he's not going to have that fantastic ab crunch that Blackest Night Batman had, but he's got a bit there, and the side to side is off the hook. If we could just keep it pushing with that forward, we'd be in great shape. Feels like when I rotate him at the diaphragm, it's putting a little bit of stress right there. Great movement at the legs. Double knees, awfully big cutouts right there. That's pretty uggo. And the ball joint ankles and wrists are sculpted. They don't have a ton of detail in it, but it's a little bit more of a simplified looking sculpt, so. The white gloves are really sharp, and of course the ring is on there. This is pretty cool. It's not the body buck I would want for every lantern. Like I wouldn't want to be, I wouldn't want to be collecting a John Stewart and a Hal Jordan that had this same body buck. But between this and this, and then that new parallax that's coming out, that feels like some cool variety. And amongst the lanterns. Definitely not opposed to that at all. Speaking of lanterns, he's got one. He's also got this construct sword. It looks like Cloud's Buster sword. Pretty cool. Pretty good match as far as the color. So he's got one fist hand and one accessory hand. So he is going to be a lefty for both the lantern and the sword, which I actually... At first, I thought that sword was kind of a dumbass accessory, and now seeing it in his hand, I kind of dig it. It does look like he is about to do his uh, cross slash limit break, though. Dun, 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 dun. So we'll start by looking at him with the other two figures of this Blackest Night Wave that I've opened so far. This is shaping up to be a pretty kick-ass wave, even though, like I've said in other videos, the lantern corner of the DC multiverse isn't really what I need fleshed out. These guys are... Very cool, very cool. Now we put him with this lineup. This looks amazing. And actually the lime, the neon lime green, green is kind of helping him stand out a little bit from some of these other green colored characters, kind of helping him carve out his own space next to these folks. Pretty badass. It does feel like we're missing somebody, doesn't it? Hmm. And now's the time of the video where we induct a frequent commenter and participant on this channel into the From Before Figs rogues gallery. Today's entry is long overdue. It's our great friend, Desaro, who has been showing up in the live streams, in the comments for as long as I can remember. Desaro was one of our very first live stream participants. Much appreciated, Desaro. Thanks for being a friend of the channel. Let's hear it in the comments for Desaro. Welcome them to the Rogues Gallery. And here he is one more time next to some lantern figures. Obviously, this neon line, neon lime is a big standout. I, do, I certainly don't prefer it next to these darker values of green, but it, it doesn't look bad, especially in hand, in person, even on camera compared to the promo photos. This this guy definitely isn't as ugly as I thought he was going to be. In fact, he looks, he looks pretty damn cool. So this has been Green Lantern, Kyle Rayner. A lot better than I thought it was going to be, honestly. I, I wasn't, wasn't too sure about this guy. It's a fun figure in hand. I do definitely want to kind of have each of those big main DC heroes represented in some form. So with this style of Kyle Rayner, this style of Jon Stewart, and then the Parallax, Hal Jordan, I feel like I'll have a little bit of variety, but some great lantern representation. I think it's going to work out. And I'm sure they'll reuse this body buck, you know, with a different head for a different lantern. That's going to be inevitable. I won't cry about it when it happens, but I won't be in a rush to pick him up. There you go, folks. Thank you so much for watching. And of course, thank you again for checking out the Kickstarter campaign, uh, sharing your positive feedback, sharing the campaign with your friends and supporting it is greatly appreciated.
That is just one more incredible thing that we are accomplishing together through this channel. I'm so grateful to you all for turning this channel into such a fantastic community. And I look forward to talking to you all next time. See you very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.